Maybe some people are wondering how, yeah, who is this man? Like Pastor said, my name is Charles Frimpong, and I've been a pastor for almost nine years, but I became born again not many years ago. In 1997, I had an encounter with the Lord, and I gave my life to Christ, and ever since, I've been walking with the Lord. Amen. I have a short message, hopefully, that I have entitled, Light Effect in the Believer's Life. Light Effect in the Believer's Life. If you have your Bible with you here, let's go to Acts chapter 1 and we'll read, sorry, Acts chapter 9 and we'll read from the verses number 1 to 8 and we see what God can do with that. Acts chapter 9 from the verses number 1 to 8. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, verse 2, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were women, men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Verse 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee, what thou must do. And then, and the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. You see, light is so important to humanity. Light is so important to humanity that everything that we do, we need light. Without light, our function becomes functionless. So when God wanted to create the world in the beginning, the Bible says that in the beginning, the earth was without form and void. And the Spirit of God moved over the earth. And God said, let there be light. So the first thing that God created was light. And that is why it is also important for us to know that we also need light to walk with God. When Jesus came on the earth, he declared, according to John chapter 8, the verse number 12, his, Jesus said that he spake, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. John chapter 1, the verse number 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. When the light came, there was no understanding of the darkness. The darkness did not have the reason to have anything to do because the light overshadowed the darkness. 
I pray in the name of Jesus that the light that is in you, the light that you have received from God that is in you will shine so that there is no darkness that can overshadow you. You will be able to penetrate into every darkness that is around you. John chapter 9, the verse number 5, Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And you also, you are in the world and you have the spirit of God in you. And that spirit of God is the light of the world that is in you. And that light must shine in every darkness that is around you. We live in a part of a world that even though light can be there 24-7, there is still darkness around us. And the light that is in us that cannot be controlled by that darkness must be shined in this darkness. Can I hear somebody shout amen? amen? As Paul journeyed through the, the persecution that came into Jerusalem, when you read the, 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 the book of Acts from chap, the, chapter 8, the verse number 1, there was persecution and the believers were scattered all around. And Paul had the audacity to go around every part of the world that he can have access to arrest believers and bring them to Jerusalem so that they can be persecuted. And the Bible says that on his journey, there was a light that shined around him. On his journey, he saw a great light, a powerful light. Now, Paul was a man who was a believer. Paul was a man who was serving God. He was zealous for God. But the Bible says that he was persecuting the Christians because he had not yet seen the light. And he thought those who are walking in the light are rather walking in darkness and he must destroy them until he himself came face to face with the light. May you come face to face with the light. May you see the light. May light, the light shine around you. So Saul of Tarsus, and I call him Saul of Tarsus because at that time he had not yet seen the light and he was still walking in the darkness. The problem is there are many Christians around the world. We think that we are serving God, but we are like Paul. We think that we know God, but we are like Paul. We are in the church and we have taken upon ourselves to be the judges of God. We carry a spirit, self-righteous spirit, that everything that somebody do, as long as it is not according to our concept, it is a sin. So we point fingers to people, but we forget that when you point one finger to somebody, four fingers are pointing at you. That self-righteous spirit must be dealt with. We don't have the spirit. If we don't have the spirit of God, we will see everything around us as long as it doesn't correspond to what we think is right as a sin. You see, the mere fact that I can stand on my feet and pray for three hours, six hours, doesn't mean that somebody praying for one hour, his prayer will not be answered. As long as I pray and shout, doesn't mean when somebody sit down quietly and pray, his prayer will not be answered. As long as I go to church every Sunday and when I go, I want everybody to see that I'm around, doesn't mean that sister who comes and sits at the corner there, God has not seen him or her. Hallelujah. I remember one day our... Father, Reverend Isturanaba, he is the founder of our church, Fountain Gate Chapel, 1987. And he said when he was at the university, he was the president of the student fellowship. So when his time was about to be over, they gathered to pray. They wanted some who would succeed him. One of the men who were praying with him was lying on a bench sleeping. And God said, that is the next person. He said, no, God, this cannot be. We need somebody who has the fire, who carry the fire, who can stand and preach the gospel. God said that man was him. And truly, that man succeeded him, led the fellowship, and he is now a bishop of an Anglican church in Ghana. Hallelujah. 
We must not only think that we are the only people who are working with God. We must not only think that we are the only righteous people. God has called people and they may not look like us. But hey, my brother, my sister, I want you to know that God loves them just as he loves you. Amen. So the light came and it knocked Paul down. The light came and it knocked Paul down. You see, Paul was full of pride and arrogance. Paul thought that what he, the level that he has reached, before anybody can reach that level, the person must be like him. But God said that I don't look at your humanity, your human frailty, and the things that you do according to your ability to say that you are a righteous person in me. And therefore, I must take out that pride and arrogance from you. So the light came and the light hit Paul. And the, 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 the light caused him to fall down from the horse. The light was powerful. God took him and stripped him of all the price, or all the pride, all the pride. You see, Paul has, the, the, the pride that is in him was depending upon the flesh. It was the flesh dependable. He had confidence in his flesh. So many of us have confidence in our flesh. What we can do, what we have achieved, our money, our families, uh, our education, our standard, and we depend upon that confidence, that flesh, and have confidence in it. And we try, because of that, we dim the light of God that is in us. Philippians chapter 3, the verse number 5. Paul described a little bit of his confidence. And he said, though I might, all, I might also have confidence in the flesh, but this time Paul has been converted. Paul is moving now in the light of Christ. And he wanted the people to know that if you want to have confidence, I had confidence more than you. So he said, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man think that he had Whereof he might trust in the flesh, I, Paul, I more. Why? Because he said, the verse number five, he says the verse number five. I was circumcised at the, on the eighth day as a Jew. I come from the tribe of Benjamin and there is no foreign blood that is in my blood. I come from the tribe of Benjamin, a stock of Israel. I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. And as touching the law, I am a Pharisee. Acts chapter 22, the verse number 3, he says that I was trained as a Pharisee, but no man but a respectable and a reputable man in Israel called Gamaliel. So when we talk of the flesh, I am on top. I busted in the pride. That was the reason why I was persecuting the Christians. But when the light came, when the light shined on me, when I saw the light, when I saw the power, that confidence that I had in the flesh was, flesh was stripped off and I had to humble myself. I came to tell somebody, don't depend upon the flesh. The flesh will destroy you. But put down the flesh and walk in humility. Lift your head up. Look unto Jesus, the altar and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and he despised the shame. I want to encourage somebody, no matter how much shame that you think you are walking in, Jesus walked in more than that shame. By the end of the day, he became victorious. May that light shine in you so that you will go out there and people will see the light, but they will not see any shame in your life. Amen. The Bible says that the light blinded Paul. The light blinded Paul. God needed to reset him. God needed to reset his mind. He needed to readjust the way he thinks, readjust the way he does things. So he said, 
Paul, I want to, you to know the state of your life. The state that you think that you are in serving me, God. That state is darkness. When Paul get, got converted, he said in Ephesians chapter 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. And that was the darkness that he was walking in. So he had to be blind. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the verse number 3 to 6, but if our gospel is hidden, if the gospel that I Paul, I preach, if that gospel is hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost, in whom the God of this age has blinded the mind of, of the individuals that they may not see the glory of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are walking in the world and you are blinded by the, the, the God of this age, you will not see the glory. But when the, the light of God comes upon you, God reveals himself unto you. And you, when you walk in that light, you will see the glory. You will see the blessing. You will see the flourishing of God in you. He said in Psalm 1, the verse number 1 to 3, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the law, and upon his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He will bear his fruit in his season, and his leaf will, ne his leaf will never wither. May your leaf never be withered. May you be able to bear the fruit at the time that you expect the fruit to be born. Hallelujah. So when the light came... To Paul, the glory of God came to Paul. God saw the, Paul saw the glory. When we walk in the light, we walk in the blessings of God. When we walk in the light, we don't judge other people. Hallelujah. We don't become judgmental. Oh, me, I belong to Fountain Gate Chapel. That is the only church. That is the good church. That is the only church that walks in the spirit. That is the only church that hears from God. You are deceiving yourself. Hallelujah. You are deceiving yourself. Because, oh, when Elijah was being persecuted by Jezebel, he said, God, they have killed all your prophets. I am the only one. God said, don't make that mistake. I have 700 prophets who have not bowed their knees to Baal. So don't make that mistake. We don't have to make that mistake to, begin to, to judge people. Anytime we judge people, we can no, never convert them. If we judge people, we can't convert them. If we carry the spirit of judgment, we can't convert them. But what shall we do? We may be able to convict them of their sins for them to know the consequence of their sins. What is the consequence of their sins? The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life. Wages, like pastor said, I work as a transport, uh, 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 I work as a bus driver. I drive bus. So at the end of every month, whether my boss likes it or not, he has to give me my wages. Hallelujah. Whether he likes it or not, I don't, I don't care whether he has money or he doesn't have money. My salary must come. Very soon, I'll be celebrating my birthday. I can never go to him and say, this is my birthday, give me my present. So he said, the gift of God is eternal life. We cannot demand God to give us gift. But God has freely given us the gifts. You see, for us to walk in righteousness, we have nothing in us that can make us righteous. The Bible says that righteousness has been imputed 
on us. So for us to be the righteousness of God, God himself became a man and he took upon himself the sins of man and he died on the cross and after dying on the cross, he gave us the righteousness. So the Bible says in the book of Corinthians that he who knew no sin became sin, but we through his righteousness will become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. May you enjoy the righteousness. So Paul saw the light, and then he started, he became blind. And at a point in time when he, his eyes was open, he said, people must see the light. When the light shines in us, we, ref, must, we must reflect the light. We must reflect the light. The light that we receive we must also give the light. When we walk in the light, we must reveal the goodness of God. We must show the world that God is good. Hallelujah. Some, some, I, think was, I think just after the corona, I was preaching one day. And there was a book I, was being, I had been yearning for. called. The, it was written by a Pakistani woman called, I dare to call him father. And I said, I can't find the book. One of my daughters went just in the church, just last week, brought me the book, and I was, I'm eager to, to read the book. And the woman, at the age of around 54, saw the light. Her husband divorced her, felt lonely, and she said there was emptiness in her life and was yearning for something that will fill that emptiness. And one day she felt as she walked in her garden, felt that somebody has touched her. Meanwhile, she was alone. Came to the room and he was thinking about this thing that touched me. What is it? In the night she had a dream and in the dream Jesus came into her room and Jesus sat down and they were eating. All of a sudden, Jesus took him to Ma on a mountain and he saw John the Baptist. Jesus gave, and then Jesus disappeared. Then he said, why did Jesus have to leave me uh, to this John the Baptist? Who is John the Baptist? The woman, she is a Muslim. She doesn't know God. She went to a Christian missionary and asked her, who is John the Baptist? And then the missionary opened the Bible, the book of John, and showed her who John the Baptist is. And she said, but why should Jesus point me to join the Baptist instead of him telling me what to do? And the woman said, I don't know, but we can find answers to the, in the Bible. She went home and then got a Bible and started reading the Bible. And when she started reading the Bible, she said she felt that any time she picks the Bible to read, she feels a presence and that presence makes her feel peace and joy. And in the night, she saw a very bright light. It was like a dream. There were so many things that she has written, but there was a dream. And many people were standing outside somewhere, and she heard a voice telling her that the people there must also see the light. Hallelujah. We have seen the light. What are we doing with the light? Jesus said, he is the light of the world. As long as he is in this world, he is the light of the world. He has died and left the light to us. So you and I are also the light. You see, he has made us. It's like the sun and the moon. The moon itself don't have light. The moon reflects, receive light relative to where they are placed to each other. Receive light from the sun. And when the sun is not to be seen, the moon reflects the light of the sun. So we are like the moon, we are like the sun that God has chosen. And the world is like the moon. And we must be able to reflect the light. Matthew chapter 5, the verse number 14, he said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. The light that is in you, it cannot be hidden. 
Hallelujah. Don't let the light be hidden in you. People must see the light. There must, the light must shine so well that people must see it. He said, neither do men light candle and put them under bushel, but on a candlestick. Oh, Jesus. Don't let your, the light, the candle that is in you, be under your bed. But let it be on a candlestick. Let it be shown outside so that people will see. Five, the, the verse number 16 says, Let your light shine so well that men will see the goodness of your, of your God. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Your good works. The way you treat people, the way you relate with people, the way you handle people, the way you talk to people, irrespective of your status. Hallelujah. Irrespective of where you stand. And you see, when I was talking about Paul's pride. One of the things I admire your pastor most, he is a man who is having two PhDs. PhD in theology and PhD in Christian counsel. But I believe everybody here calls him Ravi. I met a man this, this year, I think we went to a funeral. He's a pastor. Somebody saw him and said, oh, pastor, so, so, and so. He said, don't call me pastor, call me reverend. I know somebody may ask, be asking, how do you call yourself? Me, I respond to any, anything you call me. When you call me Charles, I'll respond. Some call me brother, call me, I respond. If you call me Pastor Frimpon, I'll respond. I don't have any specific... Because even the man who lay hands on and ordained me, he is called only pastor. You see, the anointing of God is not in the title. The anointing of God is in your relationship and your fellowship with Christ. That where the more you get close to Christ, the more you receive the light, and then you can reflect the light. Your title cannot bring people to Christ. Hallelujah. So as a, 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 a light, a sun that you have received the moon, you must be able to reflect the light. Paul asked Jesus, what will you want me to do? What will you want me to do? Because now that you have arrested me, I, am, I have become a loose. Because I had a duty to go and arrest the Christians, but now you have arrested me. That duty has been stripped of me. So what do you, do you want me to do? And I was wondering Jesus was going to give him instruction what to go and do. But Jesus said, go into the city and you will be told. Because, you see, there is nobody in the Christian faith who is an island. We depend upon one another. We are accountable to one another. So Jesus said, you, Paul, I know you. If I give you instruction, you will go to Jerusalem and tell the people that me, I met Jesus and Jesus told me to do this, so I will not listen to anybody. There are a lot of us who come to church and we say, me, I came to church to serve God. I don't have to listen to anybody. Have you ever seen God coming from heaven to come and tell anybody what to do himself? God can do everything, but he will not do anything without man. God can do everything, but without man, he will not do anything. God needs you. God needs me. For the gospel to be propagated, God needs you. God needs me. We must be able to come together and join our strength together so that we can have that synergy to be able to propagate the world, the, the word. Many a times, many a times, when we hear a new church has been started around us, we become panic. Hey, the church is coming to take my, take my members. But hey, what God has given to you, if you take good care of it, nobody can take it from you. Hallelujah. Just about, I, no, last two weeks, 
We finished prayer meeting on Friday, and one of my daughters came and said, Daddy, this woman said she was coming to church, but we have closed. I spoke to the woman, and he said, No, I am looking for a certain church. And we found out that there has been, I don't know whether it's fellowship or something, but a church close nearby. So we directed her, and she went. And the girl said, But Daddy, we can also uh, let her fellowship with her. I said, No, she didn't come before because of us. And it is good that another church is starting there because just around the corner, there is a mosque. So we must also gather our forces and become great and entrench this area so that the principalities and powers that is fighting against the spirit of God, we can be able to fight against that spirit, that principality. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, go to the city and you will be told what to do. God has given you a pastor. God has given you leaders. You must be able to listen to the leaders and the pastors of the church. One of the things is today, if you go online, there are powerful preachers online. Oh, you will see my father, Reverend, is still there. You will see T.D. Jakes there. You will see powerful preachers. Powerful preachers. So I'm not underrating any of them. But let me tell you one thing. The only voice that will bring you to your final destination is the voice that you hear from this pulpit. Hallelujah. That is the only voice that God has said before you. Jesus said, if anybody comes through the window, he is a thief and a robber. But my sheep, they know me and they hear my voice. You must know your pastor. You must hear his voice. Don't come to church because if you don't come, sister, so-so and so, brother, so-so and so will call you and ask you why you didn't come to church. Don't come to church because if you absent yourself, pastor will call you to find out why you did not come to church. Come to church because you want to hear your word. The rhema word that God has for you. The word God has put in somebody's mouth. I like the one that was leading the prayer. He said that Isaiah said, I cannot speak God to charcoal and touch his tongue. There is a tongue that God has touched. There is a tongue that is speaking that light into your life. You must be able to hear that tongue and listen to it and obey it because God wants him to give you the word. The preachers on online, they are powerful. I'm not seeing, I also listen to some of them. It's good to listen to them. But no matter what the situation, no matter where you go, you must have a home. Hallelujah. Hello. You must have a home. If you sleep on the street, you are homeless. So if you only listen to online messages and depend upon the online messages, you are homeless. There is nobody that is going to give an account of you on the day of judgment. But God wants a pastor who will stand and say, this was my church member. And if you have been fornicating, then God will tell him, why didn't you teach him that fornicating, fornication is a sin? Hallelujah. Amen. I, I hope I am preaching. Yes. We must be able to hear the voice. The people that were around Paul, they heard the voice, but they could not hear the content of the voices. They could not hear the content of the voices. Acts chapter 22, the verse number 7, Paul said that the people only heard the noise. The, the people didn't hear the noise. And I went to, uh, 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 I, I used a Bible called the Dick annotated Bible, and he said, the, the people, according to the original script, the people heard noises, but they did not hear the content. Do you remember when Elijah was running away from Jezebel and went to hide in a cave? The Bible says there was fire, there was earthquake, and there was wind, but the voice of God was not there. The voice of God was still small voice that came and that was the word that was for Elijah. There is a voice that is speaking to you. In your home, your friends, your working place, everybody is making noise. But which of them are you be able to, 
to, to, to hear and identify as the word of God. That is for you. As your Rima word. Isaiah 43 says that wherever you go, you will hear a still small voice telling you what to do. I want somebody to know that God wants you to hear a voice. But the voice is placed in your home. If you keep on wandering around, you may miss the voice. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I know you read your Bible. Oh, it's the same Bible. Everybody read the Bible. We hear the Bible. I, I also pray. I can also pray. I can hear the Bible. I, I can also hear from God. I know it is true. But there is a specific word. It is only in one person's mouth that you must hear. Hallelujah. I'm not saying don't read your Bible. I'm not saying don't pray. It is very important for you to read your Bible and pray so that when the word comes, you can be able to identify the word. If you don't know the word, when it comes, you will not know it. Hallelujah. I don't want to go into so many stories. But you see, uh, there is a popular preacher, I don't want to mention his name in Ghana, and he said the first time he traveled to Europe, there was a church that invited him. They bought him a business class ticket. And all the money that he has in his pocket was $50. So he said, if I get down and I don't see anybody, I must be able to use this $50 to take taxi and go to where I have to go. In the plane... They came with champagne. I mean, I mean, the man is sitting in business class. Food and everything. And he rejected all everything that was served him. So when the plane landed and he, went, he was going out, one of the stewards, stewards said, thank you for flying with us. I hope you enjoyed the flight. And he said, oh, it was a very nice flight. And he said, but I'm sorry you didn't eat any of our food. I hope next time you... He said, no. I, 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 I didn't have money to buy for the food. Buy the food. He said, oh, that this thing was, oh, you're, you have a business class ticket. Even those who are living, sitting in the economy, they got food and everything was included in your ticket. So you should have eaten it. It doesn't cost anything. But you know what? It was too late. So you must read your Bible. Hallelujah. Don't say that the pastor came and said that our word is in our pastor, so me, let me close my Bible. You must read your Bible. You must study your Bible. There's a difference between reading and studying. You must study your Bible. You must pray. You must fellowship with God. You must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You must know God for yourself. But God says, he, Paul said in Hebrews 10.25, do not forsake the assembly of the righteous. You must also remember to be part of the assembly of the people that God has chosen for you to fellowship. You must remember that there is a shepherd in the house and you must follow that shepherd. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9. Let's come to the end of the message. 9, the verse number 10 and 12. God, after Paul coming out blind, God called for a disciple called Ananias who was living in Damascus. And in, the, and in Damascus, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. I'm reading from King James Version in case you are. For behold, he prayeth, that means he's praying, and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he may receive his sight. My problem was with Ananias. He said, God, Jesus, you know all things. You see all things. 
Do you know how much havoc this guy has been doing to your people? Do you know how he wants to destroy us? And you want me to go and pray for him? I will not go. How many times our pastor do send us and we say, ah, but why can't he do it himself? Why can't he send another person? Why is it only me, 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 me? God had more problem. Jesus had more problem with the disciple to pray for the, for, for the converter rather than having the problem with the Paul himself. Because the moment he saw the light, he said, God, what do you want me to do? But this man who has seen the light and is walking in the light. No, Ananias was not a novice. He was not an appeals. He was somebody who has grown in the Lord. When he saw the vision, I don't want to go into vision. But when he saw the vision, he immediately saw that this is Christ speaking to me. And then he told him what he has to do. But he said, no, I won't go. Mm -mm. La -la. This man is a murderer. Why should I go to a medra and pray for him? He was coming here after me, and now you want me to go and resolve his problem for him. I don't, I won't go. People, I want us to know the assignment of God will not always be easy. God may choose dangerous places to send us. And if we look, with our naked eye, without through, and we, if we don't look through the lenses of God, we will reject it outright. As I was reading this book that my daughter gave me, I began to admire the people who are missionaries, especially in those parts of the world. Because the woman that gave her life to Christ, immediately her own daughter told her that it's better you, 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 you run away for, for your life. And people are missionaries. They go there. Had it not been some missionaries who were in that country, that woman's feet might have died. But the, there were four missionaries. One of them is called Mitchells and one of them is called Old a man and a, a, a husband and wife, two couple. They were the ones who supported the woman, taught the woman how to walk with God and continue to encourage her so that she would not run away from the faith. My brother, my sister, God is speaking to you. The assignment God is giving you may be dangerous, but believe in him. Trust him. Follow him. Go his ways. Because he said, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, he will condemn because you are his heritage. Hallelujah. Let us be able to make the work easier for ourselves. You see, if God calls you and you refuse, God can always replace you. But... It will be painful for you to realize that the assignment was for you and you refuse the assignment. And somebody takes the assignment upon himself or herself and he is receiving the blessings. And that is where we become jealous and envious. But we had the opportunity in the first place. After, you see, after Ananias praying for Paul, for Paul to receive his sight, we never heard of the name Ananias. It was rather Paul and Barnabas because Paul, Barnabas was not afraid to go near Paul and he held the hand of Paul and brought him to the disciples and said, hey, if nobody believes in this man, I believe him. So when they were praying in Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost said, separate us to, for me, Paul and Barnabas for the assignment that I've given to them. So it was Paul and Barnabas, but not Paul and Ananias. I want us to in humility, ask each and every one of us, the assignment may be difficult. 
oh, especially this part of Europe, especially this part of the world, especially this era that we live in, in the modernism, it is very difficult to become a Christian. It is very difficult to propagate the gospel. It is very difficult to let the light shine. But God has called us to shine forth so that the world will see his goodness. Let's be on our feet and pray for five minutes. I want every one of us to begin to pray that God give me the grace. It is not by power, it is not by might, but by the Spirit of God. God give me the grace so that I can be able to let the light, light shine forth through me to touch the hearts. Sometimes it is not only an unbeliever. Somebody may be sitting beside you and the person may be going through challenges and troubles. And the ver that very day, that person has never sit beside you, but God, that person came to sit beside you because God has put a word in your mouth to give to that person. Let us pray that we will receive the grace and be the true agents of God to propagate and let his light shine. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise, honor, and adoration. May your name be glorified. We need your grace. Lord, we can, without you, we can't do anything. May you strengthen us. Father, grant us the grace to be a good vessel of yours. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.